Welcome to the Men's Lifeline Academy. We help men improve their lives, get their dead heart beating. My name's Zach. I'm the host. And today, I got a number one father, pickball player. I got Bryant in the house today. Bryant, how are you doing? I am good, brother. How are you? Thanks for having me. I know it's taken a couple times to coordinate this, so glad that we could finally make it happen. Hey, I'm glad I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. I see that you're there, you know, posting dollars, you know, posting videos with your daughter and just trying to, you know, bring her land. I know school just started, so I appreciate you getting up this early too, especially since the first week of school is never easy getting the kids up and ready and ship them off to school for the full day. No, it uh, it really isn't. But um, thankfully, it's been a uh, a smoother transition than than what I would have thought. I mean, it's such a big life change for for a little kiddo. Um, first couple of days, we're, we're a little tough and just in terms of like, okay, this is now where we're going to be for the day. So with the not wanting to go, but then quickly, you know, in terms of, it's just at that age, how quickly they make friends, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I know it could go the other way too, but it's been a good experience so far for my daughter, which I'm super grateful for and now wanting to go. So that's all I care about in a good place. And it's just, I, I, I'm still in the stone ages where like, okay, like thinking when I was in kindergarten, you go, you know, there was no technology. I'm right. They have this app now. It's like, oh, here's what they're doing in school today from like the teacher. I'm like, this is so cool. Even though I, I mean, until you go through it, you don't know, like, kind of like what that thing is. And our daughter never really did daycare. So I know it okay. sounds like daycare. Oh, that's what they do. They give you those types of updates. So yeah. that's like my first experience with um, getting updates from a teacher. I'm like, that's just, it's just like a bright spot in the day. So I, I look forward to those like updates. It's so cool. Yeah, well, that way you kind of know if there's any homework, anything that needs to be assigned, anything that yes. you need to work on, say, update. Because I know a lot of parents want to take really charge of their kids' education nowadays. Uh, parents are paying a little bit more attention to what's going on in school and really want to make sure that they give their kids the best education possible, especially how fast and how much more material they have to learn nowadays than compared to when you and I went to school. And it's like, kind of get to the age where it's like, Wow, it's like I didn't learn this till later. Now you guys are learning this now. Exactly. Now I get that feeling. <laughs> exactly. No, it's 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 crazy. Just how times have changed and evolved and and whatnot. And nothing stays the same, you know, like constantly. Cool. Everything is just you gotta stay with it. Otherwise, unless you're retired, then I guess we could just kind of just not you know, not right away, but you don't have to keep up. You just I don't you know what I'm trying to say. I know you you enjoy just enjoy that morning coffee and morning coffee and just enjoy that sunrise and the sunset and all the things that they say and not have a worry in the world. Akuna Matata, right? Akuna Matata, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Akuna Matata. I go with that kind of mentality, mindset, and what a good way. It just it is what it is. We're it is get, what it is. It. So, Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? We know that you're a father. You know, you got your daughter. Yep. Who else? So, and we know you're going to be soon to be the number one pickup baller in the world. Yeah, you know, I don't know about that. I, it, <laughs> uh, I love making pickleball content. I was actually um, with uh, one of the top pros here in Austin making content last night and and uh, just loving that part of my that world um, because of a tennis background. So I, I'll get into I'll be happy to get into that because it is a part of my life right now. But um, first and foremost, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a father. Uh, I'm a single father. So a lot of people um, don't realize that. But uh, single father, faith. The, relationship with God, number one, raised um, by wonderful parents, family, uh, where that was the foundation. And so thankful that that is something that, um, of course, I feel like you have to come to your own uh, realization, understanding and life experiences for that mm -hmm. to be real and authentic. And um, that has certainly been a journey like it is for every one of us who doesn't have a story these days um, for always. And right. so that is that is first and foremost. Second priority is 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 being a father, and it's I don't think uh, for us fathers who are blessed to have that title, I don't think there's a better title um, in the world. Um, and I think it's the hardest job done the right way, um, and I think it's the best way to leave a legacy. So that's uh, where I've spent a lot of my time, especially here, you know, on on X, is really just uh, you know, is all the great. Twitter people say, or X, if you can't do it for a decade, why do it for a day? And I love that because sure. it's such a, like, this is just a part of who we are, our DNA. Um, and want to shout out to you and what you're doing, like on X and with this podcast, like I could tell, like 
you're going to last because it's who you are. You embody all the characteristics that I try to have uh, as a, as a father all the time in terms of just positivity and resilience Mm -hmm. um, and just putting one foot in front of the next, you know? Um, So keep doing what you're doing here, bro. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I can't wait to see where you're going to be a few years from now. Um, But uh, yeah, so fatherhood and uh, my, I'm very, very busy with my nine to five job on the road, like three weeks out of the month. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm in pharmaceutical uh, sales. So visiting hospitals all the time. Um, and then, uh, pickleball content. So big tennis background played at the professional level for a very short period of time, but you know, oh, it's like college college and pro events for a little bit. A lot of the, I was four in the country heading into college. Um, so I was highly recruited. Oh, Um, that's awesome. Yeah, no. So that was my life. I mean, even my junior year, I was homeschooled for it because I traveled constantly. Um, and so that was, uh, the tennis background super grateful for because it just gave me the life lessons that um i feel like it, 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 blessing and a curse i guess because you know you, you're oh, so ocd um mm-hmm. but i feel like you have to be obsessive in some ways if you want to be great at anything and so like i've channeled the, the those lessons i've learned from tennis into like what do i want to do now with the rest of the life that i have and you know we all have that dash until the day that you know we right. and i like to say we go home hopefully god willing um, how do you want to spend that time? And so like taking the lessons I took from tennis and in terms of being, having, always having a target, always having a goal, what's the mission? Um, tennis is what I attribute, uh, you know, a lot of my, uh, I'm just thankful for, you know, I want to give back to the game, but also in pickleball now, because pickleball is a quick growing sport, especially in the U S yep. and what I love about pickleball is that it's so community focused. And I feel like, uh, and there's a lot of like folks that are putting pickleball content out there, but what I feel like, um, what I really would like to do is how do I bring the family and pickleball component together? Oh, and, um, especially for fathers, because we're more isolated than ever in, in a world that has more tech tech than ever. Um, but how can we bring community with pickleball? Because it's the barriers are, are, are low relative to like tennis um mm-hmm. easier to get into um so how could we you know and that, that hasn't really come to life yet but that's kind of like what i my, what i would love to do um because it's such a wonderful game and the, very rarely are people like oh i didn't have fun playing pickleball you know yeah. um but they don't even remember what they actually did they remember like oh i met so and so through pickleball and so that's what i think is so unique and why i'm super i'm doubling down in terms of make, just trying to th- put content out there to help help folks like if they're a beginner get to the next level but then also, I think there's something bigger there that I haven't really uncovered yet. But I'm excited to just keep going because um, I think there's something special. Yeah, and it was really nice about Pickleball because I actually had an opportunity to play for the first time a couple of weeks back. I remember that. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, definitely. We'll get that in just a minute. But really, what's you know about half the size, and there's like a lot more. There's a lot less movement in a way to compare to tennis, right? Because 100%. you're taking the paddle and you're just going up or doing a backhand swing and things like that. So it's something that everyone can do because I was seeing everyone from every age. And that's why I think pickleball is kind of cool. Um, I'm actually personally trying to get back. I'm trying to actually learn tennis and get into tennis. So you have to teach me. A I help you out there, brother. 100%. <laughs> but I think it's so cool that what you're trying to do that, you know, number four in the country, you played both at the collegiate level and professional level, which I didn't know that about you. I think that's awesome. You got to highlight that a little bit more. What that's like, and you're right. You do have to be a little bit obsessive. You have to. You want to be great at something. You have to really devouch that much time into it and what you're willing to sacrifice. And I think you're going to go far because you want to incorporate the family unit, right? Especially with your talk of being men, because you're right. We are more separated. I know more guys, honestly, online that I've connected with, talked to, than I kind of do I you. in real life. And in it's, life. I yeah, but I mean, but that's what the algorithm does. So it brings people who are searching for a better life. You find that. You're finding people who want to be negative You in politics. You find that. You'll find that on X, Twitter, YouTube, everything, right? So kind of what led you to kind of focus solely on fathers? I know you mentioned a single father, so I would love to hear your experience on that. Like, what is that like? Because that's something we don't really highlight a lot is single fatherhoods. We focus a lot on single mothers because... 
there's probably more. I don't know the statistics on that. Yeah. But we don't highlight single fatherhood a lot. So I'd love to learn more about that from your perspective. You know, a single fatherhood is, I uh, wouldn't want, you know, of course, um, like kind of without going into the weeds in high level, like, of course, you don't want to sign up for something like that and had the best of intentions, you know, as um, I entered into marriage, you know, with, with my daughter's mother. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't right. And I think it's fair to say from both sides, like from the beginning, but, you know, mistakes happen. And so um, we were married for a very short period of time. Um, and uh, now, thank this is about five years later, life is in a great place. She's, you know, my daughter, thankfully, already has a couple uh, siblings, which is amazing. Okay. Um, and uh, so, you know, there's divided time there. And uh, it's tough from there's so many different ways we could take this for single fatherhood. Um, how do you effectively co-parent? How do you effectively manage your life when you essentially have two lives? You have your life with your daughter and then, oh, my gosh, now there's no time with her. Now I'm back to like just me. How do you manage your, your schedule? There's so many different things mentally you have to always prepare for because that could be, that's a roller coaster. Single yeah. fatherhood in and of itself is a roller coaster. Then the change in schedule is a roller coaster for yourself, for your child. Um, what are activities you can do? How do I put myself first in terms of like taking care of my health? Then so I could be show up as the best father for my daughter and should be an example for her down the road. Um you know, how do I want how, the faith component, making sure I'm strong spiritually in my belief in the Lord so that I could be able to um, lead her well. Uh, there are so many, I mean, so many different things. I don't know if that was kind of. No, like, no, that was so fantastic because that's something that they, it's very common that you hear about in single motherhoods. Yeah. How do I be both the nurturer and the, the one who disciplines. What How I do I navigate that role? Because I know someone personally who's a single mother, and that's what she'll tell me. A lot of times it's the biggest struggle. is like, how do I, you know, I have to take on both the feminine and masculine qualities. It's so true. Basically, how do you become be a grandma and a drill sergeant in the same minute? I've never heard it explained that way, but that's true. Literally. <laughs> it's like. I, and of course, natu naturally for fathers, it's a little harder like to show that. But I mean, I've really had to be so mindful of like, okay, just showing that extra TLC in just being so um, – it truly levels you up as, as a man in more more ways than I could ever explain. Just just the, 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 the presence you have to have, being, compartmentalizing your life um, – yeah, it's 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 it, it, it's wild. Um, but yeah, like being showing more of that softer, especially I think for a father to a daughter, like just being more mindful of emotions and it's yeah, and but also being disciplined and yeah. you know because you're the parent ultimately. You're not the grandparent. The grandparent spoils. The parent disciplines. Yeah, you know, so it's not easy. It's well, not that's easy. also the flip side because nowadays a lot of people, a lot of kids are being raised by their grandparents. I know Ugh. at my last job, I worked with a lot of kids that were being actually being raised by their grandparents. You know, I, I, you're right about that, and that's so, so unfortunate. So, it's, someone who's already raised their kids, you know, have to now raise the next generation. But as you, so how do you stay like mindful? And I guess a good question is always to start with is like, what does mindfulness even mean to you? Oh man, mindfulness is you know, it's, 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 I think a topic that is so discussed in our world today. It has been, I mean, obviously clearly for probably for forever and will be. Um, and I know, but I know it's different for everyone. Mindfulness, mindfulness to me is like, you know, like being, being in the present, being in the here and now being one, like kind of just being so in tune with your breath. And then for me as, uh, you know, a believer in God and Christ, like, I think the ultimate form of mindfulness is prayer and getting in okay. tune with the divine and, and, and things that are, that we can't see of this world. Um, and I know a lot of folks think, okay, so like, like that's when the mind is quieted. I think we, mm -hmm. that's so true. And then I, when that mind is quieted, I like to say, okay, we've created that runway to enter into conversation with the Lord. And so that's what, you know, what, I, what it is for me. And, and as they say, I forget who said it, but like the busier you are, the more 
you need to be mindful, practice mindfulness. Right. The more time you need to take for that, the more time you need to be in prayer, whatever that looks like for you, you know, easier said than done. And I'm probably at a D minus in terms of that right now, in yeah. terms of like, man, like, cause life's busy and it always is. And I'm saying this and just in all honesty, like I, I, I'm, I'm setting the time for that, but I know that there has to be more and D minus. I'm being very hard on myself, but like it did the point being like, I need to constantly just be deliberate about you can never spend enough time, you know? And so, right. Yeah. Oh, so, and not to be too hard on yourself too, because the thing with mindfulness too, is kind of accepting reality as it is. And not yeah, uh, like they not being distracted by like just daydreaming or what they would say, kind of just like always oh, just existing. So it's like, this is reality. I'm a single father and I have to kind of put my health at the forefront because if I don't take care of myself, then how can I take care of my daughter? If I'm being hard on myself, how am I showing her those images of how to be? 100. Exactly. That's precisely. I mean, that's it. That's it. And it's, it's, uh, and it's just, it's amazing. I don't know if you find it, but like we have that mindset and one day we have it. And the next day it's like, man, I don't feel the same way. Or like, it's just, it's, I, I like to create it, be, you know, being an athlete, like create, uh, compare it to confidence. Like you mm -hmm. can be so, and I guess it can be confident even outside of anything in life. Like confidence is just like you have it and then you always have it. Like right. it changes day to day, sometimes moment to moment, you know? And it's just like, uh, you like rent is always due. Yeah. It's not like it's like okay now I have it forever, um, and I feel like that's like with with the health like and creating good habits and being an example and leading like and I very much desire to if it's in the Lord's plans, um, you know, have a spouse again. And you are you have that? I'll be going to you, Zach. Like, how do I do this? Um, but like that is an everyday thing. That's like just it's never the same, and you constantly have to adjust and grow and be ready. You know. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a few things you can do. I mean, one is kind of being open that that's going to happen, be a possibility, because that's also, if you can kind of work on the mindset. Yep. That's how you can really take control of your life. Totally. So control of your life just meaning be responsible for it, be accountable for it. So I always say to people who are looking for a spouse or something, like write down like the type of person you want, but don't ignore the green, yellow, and red flags. And the colors can be whatever you decide to do, but pay attention to them and see if this is something you would want to work on for the next 10, 20, 30 years of your life. Exactly. I like that. I don't understand this. Me, no perfect person, but is that the person that doesn't that exist? Is? Exactly. So, I mean, <clears throat> first time I'm reading a few books right now. We got marriage on the rocks by Jimmy Evans. There's another book. I forget who it's by, Okay. but it's called love and respect. Love and respect. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Who love and respect. Is that yeah, good for I'll send you the information um on X. So. Oh perfect. Okay, sweet. Um but that's one way of being if you start now and that way it can be better, especially as you learn to become, you know, a better father each and every day. And yeah, I mean I've watched a lot of tennis videos recently just because my spouse is interested in tennis, so we'll spend time watching tennis. So like you have a lot of US too. Open coming up. US Open starting here soon. That's right. Like I've been really into Carlos Alcaraz. I mean, I think he's just such a fun, fun, so good for the game. Working. Yeah, especially with him drinking that pickle juice. Now, but not so that way he doesn't get those cramps as much. Oh, I you know is uh I didn't know it was pickle juice, but okay, yeah, that's my heard. So if, I, mean, okay. I don't know. Again, I don't know him personally. Like I tell people, that's just what I've heard. I don't know him personally. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but no. every time I see him, kind of like stretch, I'm like, hey, drink that pickle juice. Pickle juice. Yes, yeah. that's uh, that's funny. No, he's so, so good for the game. His he's so much personality and just so, yeah, always smiling. I love the kid. And then when he wins, he gets so excited. And like anyone who wins a game is excited. But you can see even with him, where he's being challenged at sometimes, where he's not always as confident when he should have gotten something, and where he's just yep. then like the next minute he's doing this like giant slide. Uh, when he was in the Olympics. Yeah, and then like he just made these incredible shots, which is like, dude, that's impressive. Oh, it's he's 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 like all the greats. He's on a different stratosphere. Yeah, you know? it's just they're just in a league of their own, and you love them or hate them, you just gotta respect greatness. It's 
Yeah, well, and he's, I guess he comes from a line of greats, too, because also it's like... Oh, does he? Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. I think his grandfather was really big into tennis. I think he... Really? I didn't yeah, know Yeah, don't, don't quote me on that, but I would have to look that up. But I think his grandfather... Was big I like, I think one time was like a big tennis kind of guy. I don't know how top he got, but he was pretty big, I think. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, I have to look that up, so just make sure that's an accurate fact. <laughs> I love that. Okay, no, I'll check so, that out. Too. Are you like into like any like support groups with single fathers? Because especially being part of the church, are there like any supports that you've kind of sought out to to kind of help you with uh, whether that be like babysitting or just learning how to raise a daughter? I mean, that's you know, raising a son and a daughter is different. I mean, I don't that's, have any kids yet, but you know, you have to soon, bro. That um, no, <laughs> that's a lot of kids. That's such a great question. And um, something I've been thinking about recently, you know, how life's just uh, like seasons. And so like season, there were plenty of seasons where um, I've been in community and I've always, the goal is to always be in community in some way, right. shape or form. We know that. Um, and uh, life is just so busy right now. And that's not an excuse, but I haven't carved out the time. Like, okay, wh when am I going to put it in this schedule? To, okay. to do something like that. And I, and I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm looking for that. You know, so there's no like groups at the moment. Um, but I, I very much <clears throat> want to, and the church, the church that I'm at, um, there's no like, yet yeah, no, no group there. And okay. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very open. I'm, I'm, I'm Catholic and I love, I love my Catholic faith, but they're not as strong as like, Say, um, I love the Christian church too, non-denominational. I love how they're so like, it'd be so easy to get plugged in into like a community group type of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and uh, versus the Catholic church, it's a little maybe harder to seek out that type of setting. Um, okay. uh, but I know they have many different types of ministries and that sort of thing. So you're being my encouragement today to go after this, write down, what is that going to look like? What can I do? And I think like what you just mentioned, like babysitting or, um, the best being like, you know, how to get like single fathers, maybe just even like on a monthly basis, um, yeah. it would be just grab coffee. Um, I should figure, yeah, maybe I'll just put that on like accident, maybe create like a Facebook group or something like that. Any suggestions? You're great. Any, let me know. Like I'd love that would be, um, yeah, something, something to do. But like right now what the focus is, uh, little time that I outside of my daughter and, and my job is X creating, creating content. And so there's only so much time. Well, yes. So there's always going to be time when we make time for something. Like we're both making time for this podcast today to hopefully impact some men out there who are single fathers, right? Cause there's, there's always going to be a single father, yeah. whether they're new to single, they've been single for a while and just learning how to, manage the bills, the time, everything goes into it. So, so yeah, I and mean, that's why I want to encourage you to really kind of when to have a growth plan, we have to actually begin to write it down and the steps we take. So that's why we have the goal, which is what we want to overall achieve. And the objectives is how we, how are we going to achieve that? Yeah. Because we need, we need to have, kind of like tennis, right? You knew your diet. You knew when you're going to be working out and exercising. You knew when your competition was, but there wasn't necessarily, and I don't want to use the word excuse. Yeah. But there wasn't something you can say, I didn't know that. Right. Especially once you get to your level. Yeah. I mean, it's different when you're like <clears throat> four years old, middle school level tennis, and then high school gets a little more serious. And then from there, you kind of know what's expected. Yeah. You know how to keep scores. I'm still learning how to do. Oh, we'll get you there. <laughs> yeah you're still learning how to cooperate and handle a loss yeah yeah because that that is something like i've been trying to teach more about is what does the mature man do versus the immature man because i hear a lot of times people are more the immature but they treat that as i don't want to say all men yeah. but almost like the category of like that's just what they do right kind of mm -hmm. like the saying, well boys just do that right 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 that might be something common but is that maturity or immature you know, are you making an, an excuse in that case for someone's behavior that's not maybe acceptable? Right. So yeah. if it's like, so really with being a single father and and you might find that in the community. I mean, you really never know what someone goes through until you ask. 
So maybe as you develop the fatherhood community within pickleball and bring people together, you can even learn something from sure single mothers. I'm sure there's a lot of similarities. 100%. Yes. It's, it's the same thing, same gig. It just, you know, um, there's a ton of overlap without a doubt. No, this is, uh, you're helping me more than I'm helping you. <laughs> right. see the gears turning. I'm not gonna lie, I see the gears turning in your head. <laughs> Man, you are yes, no, that's it, that's phenomenal. What uh, without a doubt. It's 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 uh and that's that's why, you know, ultimately like um my, my focus as as it is and always will be is my 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 career. But like and that's what takes up even time beyond nine to five like it well, just, especially it, traveling which is something with the travel, another exactly. obstacle. um but why i am grateful for that it provides a wonderful foundation and security for my daughter and i but um this type of stuff that we're doing here the fatherhood the pickleball the faith like this is what fires me up and when life flipped me upside down a few years ago it's like life's too short not to tap into like what's constantly knocking on the heart right. um and uh and I think sometimes we need, not sometimes, a lot of times, this is community right here, just a small, mm -hmm. small form, one-on-one, -on -one, as they say, you know, iron sharpens iron and, and lifting each other up. Like, I needed to hear this right now. Otherwise, I would have just been here, like, working, like, no one's speaking into me. But here, like, you're speaking into me, and this is a, and then community, like, like, it, I, I, I know how powerful that could be. And so, like, thank you for firsthand just show, showing and, and, and encouraging, because, there's not enough of that out there right now, you know, um, in today's world, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, you could say, was it ever really there to begin with? Because yeah, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll talk to some other people in the, and the best question though is were the good old days really good. And so the only thing I really challenged with that thought was, well, at least back then, back in the day, people stayed together longer. People got it out committed and where you're expected that if you married somebody you're be married to them for the rest of your life that was the goal and again that's everyone's goal when you get married you don't get married like hey this is not going to work out exactly now was it the best relationship that's a different question right. was it healthiest for you that's a different question different. but if it's willing if you're willing to fight for it then it can be something beautiful it when might take time it might take Time and prayer, and that's why I really I just want to encourage you to read the book, really Marriage on the Rocks by Jimmy Evans, and really hear from him what he had to do to restore his marriage. His marriage falling apart. So in the book, it talks about how he valued golf. In his case, it wasn't tennis; it was golf. He valued golf more. So whenever there was a dispute, he'd go for golf. When he he was more, he didn't understand the difference between females and and men. And men. But so it took him time to learn that he wanted to be more intimate, have relations. And she didn't always want to be touched that way. She wanted to be more cared for, loved, appreciated, held. Just, yeah. No, I just. More intimate in that different way. And that's how you have to kind of look at things is what are you looking for? And a lot of times people just, you have to be in tune to what your partner does, what they like, and respect that. Without a doubt. Knowing, knowing how they receive love, I think is super important. Exactly. So then we get into Gary Chapman's The Five Love Languages. Oh, yeah. I think that's, those are, I remember that, not that I have to, had to recently, but like, right. I mean, that's, uh, and I always will take that with me forward. Um, I think that is so, that should be 101, like just understood in every relationship. Um, because what, my, what I re recall from that is like how you, receive love want, want to receive love doesn't necessarily mean just what you were trying to say is not how maybe someone else will so like right. you it's i think it's isn't it um human nature to give love the way you like to receive love and mm -hmm. they may that may not be speaking to them so like you think you're giving love but that does not mean anything to them unless you're doing it in the way that they receive it and right and that classic like just sometimes breakdown in communication how communication is so important i'm sure that that's what that book Thanks. talks about a lot Exactly. You're, you're speaking really on point there because it's like when we get angry, right? It's like a kid. Yep. yep. Oh, why did you push that kid down? Well, they made me mad. So I wanted to know how it, it felt to me. Yep. Right? Because we're yep. very, so as people, very self centered. 
self-centered. Oh my gosh. Deal with that. So it takes a lot of intentionality, empathy, and sometimes sympathy, even though empathy is stronger than sympathy, to really understand someone's situation and how they receive things. And really the, the cornerstone of that is really just paying attention and listening. Yeah. And <clears throat> when I mean listening, I mean actually actively listening. And that's how we can go back to that mindfulness of being in the present okay. reality. You're not thinking about your job. You're not thinking about what's going on tomorrow, what you're going to be eating. I know. And you're so focused on this person's willing to be vulnerable with me. This person's willing to open up and share with me. So that way, and this is can this advice can be really tailored to men. You know, how do we receive love? How would we want to be loved? Most men want to be respected. And a man feels respected, that means he feels confident and that he's being a good father. When your daughter says, Dad, you're the number one dad in the world, that just, I'm sure, lights you up like no other. Fires you up like no other. Oh, it's the best. So the question is, what did you do to become that father? What qualities did you exhibit for your daughter to know that you loved her, that you care for her, that when she's crying or sad you're like hey it's okay we'll talk it out and then if she pushes somebody hey there's you know we're gonna we're gonna have this conversation about why we don't push people exactly oh no you're that's so uh it's so true and it's come come and that what what i don't know why kind of what you just shared brought me to the uh uh mother Teresa. uh mm-hmm. one of my favorite quotes of hers like love until it hurts okay um, explain a little bit more about that one so I know I know a little bit Bob's about Mother Teresa, but I don't know that quote in particular. Yeah, well, I, I don't. I mean, um, I think it's up to like how we interpret it, but like kind of like love until it hurts. I think she was one of the best examples in terms of like just giving her life away, in terms right. of like for the poorest of the poor, um, not being self centered at all, living on the worst parts of the world, and trying to she give everything that she had off her back for, for others and to try to help them and serve them and love them. And I think she did it firsthand love until it hurts where she literally was way out of her comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And so like, I think if any, any, any relationship, friendship, marriage, per, as a parent, um, I tr- certainly try to keep it in mind as, as a father, my daughter, like it is the biggest it's, it's self-sacrificial. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 then in a marriage, it's not like 50 50. It's like, no, like this, I'm giving all of myself. It is self sacrificial. I don't know if, if that's the right, but like, um, and I think if everyone had that type of mindset, we totally would live in a different society, of course. Um, but like, and and we're human, so we're not going to be able to do it all the time. We're not perfect. Right. Uh, but certainly having that as the target will, will help. You know, but getting back to like the targets like that. I love when you were saying that earlier in the conversation, one of my having the athlete kind of mentality, uh, comparison or analogy, like if you don't have a target, how can you hit your target? You know, and that's anything like, so like, um, yeah, like a target being, okay, how am I going to do? And there's so many different things, but like, if it's like in a marriage love until it hurts, like, um, that is, you're going to go that extra mile. To understand there okay, how are they loved? How are I'm gonna just you know? So see that's now you're getting it. That's that's awesome. It's always awesome to see when you see that light bulb goes on. Yeah, just having a target focus because you know in tennis you know it's inbounds outbounds. Oh yes, you know if it's still right before that white line and yep. it's still inbounds. So exactly, exactly. But the question is, are you gonna hit? Is every shot gonna be hit perfect? No. no. Is not. everything going to go perfectly? No. Does it have to go perfectly? No. Nope. Because most people look at, I always like to say this. This is something I always like to say. Good, good intentions, poor execution. I like that. So yeah. your intentions might have been pure, right? Like your thoughts and getting up early, maybe cleaning the house, making everything look nice might have been really good. However, did you listen you know, to your spouse, your partner, your friend? And giving to them what they needed. Yeah. No. So that way it becomes a little bit less personal and you just working on more systems because you know your intentions, you know who you are, you know what you're willing to sacrifice. Is sometimes it comes down to a systems of how we implement the result, you know, how we implement what we need to get the results that we desire. 
I like that. These system, systems are so important, so critical. Um, so for yeah. you, it's a kind of picture with yourself, everything that you did to become that tennis star. Yep. And to maybe, you know, being the best father and building that community. The first thing you do is you always have a flyer. Hey, are you interested in tennis? Boom. If you're going to use X, hey, Rex, hey, I am sure there's a heck of a lot. I know there's a lot of single fathers on X. I've talked to them. There's Andy Harris. Oh, know. yeah. I, 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 okay. He's, yeah, that's right. He's a single father, too. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I like where you're going with it. Okay. So you're saying, like, have a, you, did, did you say flyer? Like, Say like, like a flyer, just yeah. like a just call saying out. like okay, all right, like, like like basically, are you single father? And then just trying to get to know people is what yeah. you're trying. Like, okay, exactly. got it. So, yeah. for example, I'm in a growth group right now, and the reason I know about that is because someone DM'd me, "Hey, I'm starting a growth group. It's going to be free for the first four weeks. Not sure how the pricing is going to go after that, right? But I want to encourage people to grow. So, one of the books we're reading right now is the 15 Invaluable Laws." by John Maxwell. And so I just read the first chapter and he was talking about have a growth plan. Most people have goals and objectives they want to complete, but hardly ever someone has a written plan on how they want to grow. So as men and seeking to improve our lives, we need to have a growth plan. Man, and like so that just sparked my brain of going, you know what? I have a lot of things written down. There's a lot of things to accomplish. However, what is the growth plan to get there? What are the systems to get there? So, and and I, that's why I wanted you on this podcast because I love your mission. I love that you're athletic and because men a lot of times cannot do sports. Yeah. And you're professional. So, you know, you know the best routines and everything because you've been around the best, especially again, you were just talking about how you're hanging out with a, a pro pickleball player or Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. We were yeah. With you. Yes. And so sometimes it's it's taking all that together and seeing what you can accomplish with that. And part of that's really also bringing how can you bring fathers, especially single fathers, since that's your niche, that's your focus, into pickleball, which is yeah. a good question. And I'm sure a lot of guys you play with, until you ask that question, like, hey, is anyone here like a single father? You're not going to know because something to really key on is that no one is a mind reader. I can't read your mind. I don't know if you're saying, I don't know your struggles. Exactly. Like right. I mean, I can say you maybe one day look a little bit more down, like, hey, are you okay? And right, right, right. Fine. You're going to say, I'm fine. Like, don't worry about it. Right. Oh, I, I saw that I had a little twitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's cracking my neck. Oh, really? yeah. okay. I was like, oh, I was like, I made him something a little bit more. Yeah. Cool. No, I'm like, oh, I'm so I'm sore today. Um, So sorry. No, um, you're cool. Um, no, that, that is, that is truly, uh, you've opened my eyes there because I'm good with writing down goals, writing down, you know, even checking in sometimes daily, like how am I doing relative to kind of what my monthly quarterly goals are, but like that growth plan is not something I've been as good with. So I'm going to take that uh, one of, of many takeaways here from the past hour, Zach, in terms of like, okay, um, having like a system that's like next level. That's like, Yeah next level stuff. So I want to thank you for that. Many things here. That's yeah. I have, I'm not doing that. I may yeah, post show. I may uh, be texting you like, what did you mean exactly by this? Or is this uh, along the right lines? Because I could tell like, that is something that, you know, you're, you're clearly doing, I'm sure you're having to do with the podcast, your growth mm -hmm. on X leading a group of men with your job, leading your spouse, your home. So like, yeah, clearly um, you're doing that and it shows. So I need to do it too. Well, it's all about being intentional. Right? Yeah. If, your, if your growth is being unintentional, then you're going to achieve it. Yeah. And you might need to have support. And that's something that men really struggle in and is having that support, that outreach. And, you know, so a mature man, I always say, likes to seek out support and encouraging and not getting into arguments, whereas an immature mm -hmm. man reacts based on emotion. Based on, yeah, exactly. So where someone gets you upset, then all of a sudden you start yelling versus seeking to understand. To understand, right. So there's yeah. always going to be a deeper level of meaning sometimes with men, sometimes with females and things like that. You have to just, that's why it's so important to understand where are you coming from. Right. That's, damn, 
man, I'm gonna I'm gonna check out those books because I feel like there's a lot of golden golden information in yeah, there. Yeah, I've learned a lot too. Yeah, and, I and you can kind of help with just stuff. not only marriage, just a, a lot of relationships. Exactly. You know, um, and it's good to know yourself too. You know, I you're right, exactly. for people really be honest with yourself. Who are you? Right. Do you believe in why do you believe in the things you believe in? Yeah. What are the the facts, the information to that, and then. You know, love to have you back on the podcast once you have established a pickleball, whether it be like a men's group, whether it be just like a, a family group of uh, trying to teach lessons to pickleball. Yeah, I would love that. I hope I hopefully. Uh, yeah, I with your help, your guidance and like just having a, maybe trying to be more deliberate about a system. Hopefully, you know, something comes to life, um, you know, and uh yeah, honored that I was even on this one, Zach. So thank you for having me. Truly. Well, um, I always say everything happens for a reason as we kind of wrap things up a little bit for today. And so if you're a single father, you know, Brian's gonna be starting a group. We we yep. kind of know that right now. He's gonna yep. be reaching a group. So yep. if you're watching this and you're a single father, his ex account, because we always have the guests go first as we serve them because they're taking time out of the day to come on here. So go follow him X, go follow him on Instagram, go follow him on YouTube. He's a great guy. He has a great personality. He's going to help you go to the next level and bring about a sense of community amongst fathers who need a place to be, a place yeah. where they can be vulnerable, a place where they can speak life to each other and understand the hurdles of the conflicts of single fatherhood. Yeah. And knowing that how he's going to continue to take responsibility for his life to improve, to get better, to get healthier mentally, physically, spiritually, so, Brian, as we end today, what is a word of advice you'd like to give someone today in about a minute? Oh, man, that's – well, I think um, if you're a single father, you've probably endured some type of hardship. Um, and wrapping the – you know, I'm all about faith and fatherhood, like that, that intersection – um, there was a quote that was, that was shared with me when I was in like, my deepest, darkest moments that mm -hmm. really stuck with me and I carried with me now moving forward is like if, uh, and I forget how it goes exactly, but um, in order to use a man greatly, God has to first hurt him deeply. And okay. so um, that was a, 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 a glimmer of light and hope in my darkest times to keep pushing forward. Um, and know that like nothing's going to again be given to you. One of a quote that I have right by my bed, um, is, and it's another favorite of mine is work as though everything depends upon you, but pray as though everything depended upon God. Okay. And so that's, that's constantly, you know, having the both, like it's you and God and knowing that you're never going to be walking alone, you know, um, if that's a good part of your life that you believe in. Um, so maybe over 60 seconds now, keep the faith, constantly put one foot in front of the other and good things will come. And it may not be in this life. And that's a hard thing to accept for some people, uh, myself included, but like all things work for the greater good for those who love the Lord. And so like stay faithful, keep pressing on. And then, and I truly believe better days are always around the corner. I love it. Yeah. You know, just because you go through some hurt, just because you go through some brokenness, doesn't mean you can't repair yourself. And if you need no. some help, we got the Men's Lifeline Academy Discord group. It is yeah. subscription-based. So I want to encourage you guys to look that out. Send me a DM if you're interested in joining the group, so that way we can talk more about that. And above all else, have a good day, and thank you for watching the podcast. <laughs>